الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم تسليم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وصحابة الغر الميامين ومن تابعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم افتح علينا فتوح للعارفين ووفقنا توفيق الصالحين وانفعنا اللهم بالقرآن وذكر الحكيم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يقربنا منك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم تجعل الهزن إذا شئت سهلا سهلا اللهم أعذنا من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات عمالنا وأصلح لنا شأننا كله لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك اللهم نتوب إليك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, جزاك الله خير to everyone joining us in this last session on the tafsir of the Quran Alhamdulillah we have reached um, lesson number 6 and Alhamdulillah we have also just finished Ramadan and we are just on the day after Eid, so Eid Mubarak to everyone also. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us all to reach the month of Ramadan and complete this great month, which is a means of forgiveness for everyone, a means of gaining freedom from the fire of hell. So, inshallah, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts all of our fasting in this um, blessed month and that we know is a habit of the um, Sahaba, the companions, عنهم, where they would spend half of the year fasting, sorry, they would spend half of the year before Ramadan praying, doing this du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they have long life such that they reach Ramadan and then they would spend the other half of the year after Ramadan making du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he accepts their Ramadan and accepts their fasting they done. So this was the state of the Sahaba, this is the great rank and the value of this month that they spent half of the year making dua that Allah extend their life such that they reach this month and they spend the other half of the year, the six months after Ramadan, they'd be praying that Allah accept their fast. So inshallah we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our fasts also and and just because Ramadan is over, it doesn't mean that the opportunities for us have ended. Alhamdulillah, we're in the month of Shawwal and we know the well-known hadith mentioned in Sahih Muslim where it's mentioned that the one who fasts the month of Ramadan and then follows it with six fasts in the month of Shawwal, it is as if they have fasted an entire year. So Alhamdulillah, we're in this month of Shawwal now, so we should continue the good acts and the habits that we had in Ramadan if we implemented these acts such as reading Quran, learning about Quran, um, doing zikr and so forth, these things that were so easy for us in Ramadan that inshallah we should continue all of these now outside of Ramadan also. I think there's an issue with the stream so I'll just give it a second just so we can get the stream back up and running. So you should be able to see on your screens um, the s slides from the previous week. So shall we start with the summary of the first of the surahs which we covered last week, which was Surah al -Kothar. So we mentioned Kothar meaning abundant, good, much good, and also referring to the river for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So. This translation is there in front of you. So we mentioned about how the Prophet ﷺ has been granted Gothar, which is much good, also a river in paradise, but it could refer, refer to many different things, the most number of followers and so forth. And then the Prophet ﷺ is told, so offer your prayers, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and offer the sacrifice. And indeed it is the enemies of the Prophet ﷺ, the enemies of Islam who are cut off, who are bereft of all goodness. So it is indeed them who are up there. And we mentioned about the story of this last week. And then the second surah which we covered last week was Surah Al Ma'un. And we mentioned this is just these small little acts of goodness, small kindness. So we mentioned that the surah it talks about two groups of people. Firstly, the disbelievers, 
and then the munafiqin, the hypocrites. So it talks about the kuffar and the hypocrites, and it talks about their attributes. And so firstly, it mentions about it mentions about the kuffar that they push away the orphans and they uh, push away the poor people. And then it talks about the mushrikeen where they um, they offer their prayers, but they are neglectful, they're heedless in their prayers, and they do their acts just to show off and so forth. So inshallah, the first um, surah which we are going to do this week is um, Surah al Quraysh, which obviously talks about the tribe of Quraysh, well known um, about them. So in terms of the surah, we know it's a Makkan surah, 106th um, surah, and it has four verses. So this is one of only two surahs containing four ayahs, four verses, and the other is Surah Al-Ikhlas. So Surah Al-Ikhlas and both um, this Surah Quraysh, both of them have four ayahs. So this Surah was a good thing that we're covering this Surah, Surah Quraysh and Surah Fil today. Both of these, they're both linked, so they they usually kind of come as a pair. So Surah Al-Quraysh reminds is reminding about the favors of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he had upon the Quraysh and then Surah Fil that also talks about how the story of the elephant, how the people of Makkah and how the Quraysh they were protected and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved the Kaaba from destruction from Abraha and the Quraysh and Surah Quraysh describes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the Lord of the Kaaba, Rabbul Bayt. So we see how both of these there are links. So Surah Quraysh, this is following up from Surah Al-Fil, which we'll mention later on. So Surah Al-Fil is mentioned about Surah the Elephant to put this uh, to put this fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala into the disbelievers and so forth, that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dealt with the um, people of the Elephant, the Quraysh, and Abraha and his army and so forth, and put this fear into the Quraysh. And then this Surah Quraysh followed on from that and told them, reminding them of the favours that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had bestowed upon them because of the Kaaba and because of Makkah and so forth. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prevented the elephant and the army from entering Makkah and then he destroyed their people and then he united the Quraysh, brought them together and granted them this safety, this food and so forth. So just a couple of 17 words, 73 letters. So the main theme for this surah say, talks about the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the people of Makkah, specifically upon the tribe of Quraysh. So they were the, they had this control, they were the greatest tribe. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them specifically with two journeys. So they had a journey in the winter where they would travel to Yemen, and they had a journey in the summer where they would travel to Sham. And they did these both of these journeys for trade. I will mention more about these when we get to the first ayah. But another way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed um, the Quraysh, in, which is mentioned in the final ayah of this um, surah when you get to it, is he granted them blessing of safety and stability. They had this, they didn't have fear like other tribes. So they would travel, why so in the travels, when they got to the destinations, when they returned, they were safe in all of these different places. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them this ease and this wealth and granted them this food and they had this special treatment from all that all these other tribes did not have. So we'll mention about these most in more detail about these journeys and about these other blessings when we reach the ayahs related to them. So the first ayah, Bismillah rahman rahim Li'i Lafi Quraysh. So because of giving alliances to the Quraysh, so here this alliances, this ilaf, it can have many different meanings. Here the translation is given as alliances, but this ilaf is, it could be translated as, for example, security or this unity, this fear, this um, attachment. It could be meaning attached. It could be accustomed. So this meaning that the safety that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given to the Quraysh, that they felt safe, they had this security. So what this ayah is saying is that it's like you should be amazed at the unity or the safety of the Quraysh, that how surprising 
is the conduct of the Quraysh that is by uh, from the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has reunited them after they were dispersed and separate he has granted them this great safety and yet they still turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's worship and they don't thank him for these great blessings so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he facilitated and made it easy for the Quraysh and how did he facilitate made it easy for them grant them this great security Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the following ayah so he gave them these alliances he gave them security and safety during both of their travels the travel of the winter and the travel of the summer so mentioned already that they travel in the winter to Yemen and in the summer to the Levant Sham so in the summer they would travel north um, towards um, Syria Palestine this Sham area because it was cooler then so that's why in the summer they would travel there and in the winter they would go south towards Yemen because it was warmer there so during both of these travels whether they're going north whether they're going south summer or winter they had been granted this protection this safety in this and the reason they used to travel was for trade obviously but to bring food and clothing and so forth and what happened they used to because of this uh, this great blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they were profiting both ways they were profiting whilst they were going they take things they sell they profit on the way back they bring things back to sell and they take things both directions so they're benefiting in both ways and no one used to attack them on these journey journeys and the, the people they used to say that these they are the neighbors of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they're the neighbors of the Baytullah they're the neighbors of the Kaaba they're the residents of his sanctuary they're the residents of Makatul Muqarrama and they are the people of Allah because they have control over the Kaaba so don't attack them so it's due to this Kaaba the blessings the nobility of the Kaaba that they were given protection and that no they were given this rank where the people they respected them and granted them this honor so the Kaaba this was central to the life of the Quraysh and it was the center of the pilgrimage and it due to this Kaaba it brought them much trade and prestige so then also Surah Al-Fil will come to later on but when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed the people of the elephant destroyed them and we'll mention their story shortly then the stature of the people of Makkah and the, the respect that they had that they received from the other tribes and from around the peninsula this increased and because of this story and this warning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the people the benefits and trade also increased for the Quraysh and the people of Mecca and then they were reminded of these blessings so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them of this blessing of these two journeys that they have in order that they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone they thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they praise him for all of these things so the, this surah is a, a reminder for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them these great blessings and then Allah subhanahu wa orders them فَلْيَعْبُدُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ So because of these blessings they must worship the Lord of this house So worship the Lord of this house And obviously this house is referring to the Kaaba That the Baytullah, the Kaaba, the house And then this meaning of this is worship the Lord of this house in gratitude and thanks for these immense blessings that we've already mentioned and we'll see some further blessings mentioned in the following ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has selected them to be the neighbors of the Kaaba to be the residents of Makkatul Muqarrama to he has selected them for these journeys where they have the safety so they should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this he has given them this safe sanctuary in Mecca and he's given them the sacred house and then if they don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of his blessings on them in terms of generally for all the blessings life risk all of these different blessings water from the smallest to the largest that if they don't worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on account of all of these then they should at least worship, worship him for the safety of these two journeys because these are from the most apparent and clear blessing that they can see these 
and the treatment they were getting and the safety they had because it was so apparent to them. And they were in a land in the place of Makkah it was, it was a desert, it was sandy, where they had no crops, no agriculture, no stock. So it was apparent to them that these the importance of these journeys and they were in an area where they couldn't just simply grow their own crops so these journeys were so important to them and if this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the um, final ayah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who gave them food in hunger and he bestowed them safety from a great fear so here he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is the one who gave them food after immense hunger. So we mentioned about in the people of Makkah, they used to suffer lots of hunger. They used to go through these periods of drought and hunger because due to the lack of crops and because of the type of land they had, they couldn't simply just grow crops. And then he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is also the one who granted them safety after intense or immense great fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted them the safety that, for example, when the story of the elephants, when they attacked, they had this great fear that they rose to the top of the mountains out of fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he not only gave them food, but he also granted them safety, not only in Makkah where they were protected, but also on their travels. So they used to travel in this complete calmness with no fear of any attacks, not in their travels, nor in their homes, nor on their routes. So they had this travel throughout. And it's mentioned that why did they have this protection and this safety that this is due to the dua of their forefathers in Ibrahim alayhi salam that is with the barakah, barakah of this dua of Al-Khalil Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam that it's mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah where he made this dua that Rabbi Jal hadha baladan amina so oh Allah make this a safe a secure city that Rabbi Jal hadha baladan amina so this dua of um, Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam and also in Surah Ibrahim it's mentioned where he said وَرْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ and provide them from their fruits so we see that this great dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim islam we see the results of this where they were given food even though they couldn't grow their own crops and they were given safety in this land that this army of tens of thousands of people came to attack them they came with elephants and so forth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amazingly protected them and this was a great miracle. So this is Surah Al Quraysh where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala reminded um, the tribe of Quraysh about the blessings bestowed upon them with the two journeys and with this food and this safety. So this is Surah Quraysh and we mentioned the next Surah Surah Al Fil is linked to this. So just to finish off that is not necessary that the Quraysh is it not necessary that Quraysh should worship the one who's granted them this food and safety? So due to this food, this safety, these great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Quraysh, it is indeed necessary that they worship him for this. And Surah Al-Fil, we mentioned that both of these are interlinked, that they kind of, Surah Al-Quraysh leads on from this Surah Al-Fil where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them and granted them this victory and destroyed these people of the elephant and this is why the Quraysh, one of the blessings upon the Quraysh and why they should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this again is a Makkan Surah meaning it is revealed before the Hijra and it is we know the themes of the Makkan Surahs is sh the shorter Surah, the usually the Makkan Surahs and so forth. It is the 105th um, Surah, has 5 verses, 20 words and 96 letters. So th the main theme of this Surah, it talks about the people of the elephant who set out to destroy the Kaaba. So most of the this tafsir of this Surah will be looking at the story of the elephant and how Allah subhanahu wa protected the Kaaba and protected the residents of Makkah al-Mukarramah. So this um, 
story about the people of the elephants, Abraha and his army. This occurred in the year 570 CE. It said that it occurred in Muharram, so it's approximately, it occurred in the year of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but it's in Muharram, so it's approximately around 50 days before the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because of this story, this year of the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was called by some the year of the elephant because of this story. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he protected his house, i.e. the Kaaba, by sending upon Abraha and his army from amongst the weakest of his creation, i.e. birds who were carrying small stones. And with this, they overpowered this great big army who also had elephants with them. And so these birds that they are from amongst the weakest of creation that they not known usually to kill people. We don't. Do, I don't ever really remember hearing about a bird killing someone or so forth. So they are from amongst the weakest of creation and they have small little stones. But these small little stones, they're like deadly, lethal and destructive bullets that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala use these small weak creatures and also small stones that who don't usually kill as a means of destroying and overpowering this army showing the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also this is a type of embarrassment for these people and is a warning how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected his house he protected the Quraysh he protected the residents of Mecca how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can save the Kaaba by destroying an army of tens of thousands of people according to some there in the tens of thousands even up to a hundred thousand who had elephants merely by a flock of birds who destroyed them and this story is mentioned in order to encourage the believers and also as a warning to the disbelievers so this is a very important historical event in the year of the birth of the prophet sallallahu why because it was one of the greatest miracles prior to prophethood and what it did is prove the truthfulness of the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his prophethood so it's mentioned that this is an, from amongst the Irhas. So we have the Mu'jizat, the miracles of the Prophet wasallam. but the Mu'jizat usually refer to those that the miracles that occurred after the age of 40. So after the Prophet wasallam was ordered to proclaim this prophethood. But the miracles prior to this, they were called Irhas. And this was from amongst the greatest of those that it occurred even before the birth of the Prophet wasallam. So the first ayah of Surah Al-Fil, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alam thara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-Fil. So, O oh dear Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, did you not see how you look? How did your Lord deal with the people of the elephant? So here it's addressing the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that did you see this? How Allah subhanahu wa taala dealt with the people of the elephant? But it's also addressing the Quraysh, and we'll see more about this shortly. So. Um, just we'll go through the story of um, Abraha and the people of the elephant. We won't go into too much detail due to the time restriction, but inshallah, we'll try covering it in some detail. So Abraha, he was a Christian ruler, king of Yemen, and he had built a big giant church in Sana'a. So this was the capital of Yemen. So he built a giant structure that which had not been seen, the like of which had not been seen in his time. So he wanted, obviously, he wanted the pilgrims, the pilgrims to travel there rather than travel to the harem in Mecca. And he didn't, he didn't want tra people to travel to the Arab lands and to the Kaaba. Rather, he wanted them to travel to this church he had built in Yemen. And then, obviously, the Quraysh, they had when they came to know of this some of them became angry and then they said a man from amongst the Quraysh that he went traveled to um, this um, church and he spoiled its walls with filth out of hate out of kind of out of this anger so the Quraysh they were of course infuriated by this that one of them he journeyed to this church entered it in one night and he revealed himself within it and escaped from them and then when the custodians of this church they found out they saw what had happened they reported it to the king Abraha and then 
they said that one of the Quraysh has done this to the place that you have appointed as a church. So upon hearing this, um, Abraha, he became angry, this angered him. So he made this oath. He swore to that he would march to the house of the Kaaba and he would destroy it. So this is the oath that he made. So then he approached Makkah with a large army in the tens of thousands and they always had elephants with them and they had the largest elephant at the front leading the way and they, when they reached a place close to Makkah and the people of Makkah they ran to the tops of the mountains out of fear from the army and their strength. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he sent upon the army of Abraha small birds. Each of these birds had three stones with them. So one in their beak and two in their feet or their claws. And then obviously the birds they attacked this army with these stones and they threw these stones at the army. And we mentioned about how these stones they were like piercing bullets that they would enter from the head of the men and they'd exit from the opposite sides they'd go through the entire body that is the strength of this great miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they used to pierce through the entire body of the army and then they also then threw stones and also the wind and so forth the stones at the dead bodies such that they were completely destroyed and it is mentioned the result of this destruction in the final ayah, how, what was the finish, what was the end result of all of this destruction on this army. So this in itself, just this one ayah of the story that this is a great lesson for those who used to, who would think the great lesson for the Quraysh that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected them. And then in the following ayah, Alam yaj'al kaidahum fi tableel That did he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not put their scheme or their plan into ruin That did he not destroy them, did he not protect the Kaaba and the residents of Mecca and cause the army of Abraha to be defeated And then the following ayah وَأَرْسَلَ عَلَيْهِمْ تَيْرًا أَبَابِيلٌ That did he not send flocks of birds upon them that he caused their army to be overcome by birds. These birds, they were flocks of them would come. So they come in group and these the army was surrounded from every direction that these birds would come from all different directions such that they would surround this army. And then it's mentioned that that they, these birds, they pelted and they hit um, the army with these stones from baked clay. So they threw these small little, small stones from clay, but although they were small little stones, they were like piercing bullets that anyone, all those that are hit by them, they would of course die they would be killed due to the strength of these bullet-like stones. And then the final um, ayah from the surah, فَجَعَلَهُمْ كَعَصْفٍ مَأْكُولٍ So he made them like the leftover devoured leaves of farms. So that this it ends with a question mark because obviously going back to the first ayah that addressing the Prophet ﷺ, that did you see how your Lord dealt with the people of the elephant and so forth, how they're attacked by birds from all directions, attacked by stones which they threw and he left them like this, like left out devoured leaves from of farm. So what does this mean that it's like leaves when they're blown off a tree by the wind and then they're eaten so these leaves of vegetation and produce, then they're eaten by, for example, cattle or other animals and they, they defecate this out and it becomes dung. That this is how, this was the result of this army, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed them, annihilated them and repelled them in their plan and their anger. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused such destruction to them that what was left was this leftover devout, like leftover devout leaves that the bodies and such were in this state that all of the army was destroyed 
And this um, story it shows a miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the Kaaba, his how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected the Kaaba, the inhabitants of Makkah al Mukarramah, and his blessings and favor on the Quraysh such that it was necessary upon them to worship and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this blessing. And he mentioned that this surah is obviously Surah Al Fil is before Surah Al Quraysh in the Quran that firstly is mentioned about how Allah favored. He, the Quraysh, he protected them from the attack of the Abraha and his army and the elephants. And then in Surah Quraysh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the other blessings upon the Quraysh, like the journeys and why they must, due to these blessings, worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of these immense favors upon them. So, inshallah. We, um, that covers the final um, surah of that we intended to cover. So we cover Surah Al Fatiha and the last 10 surahs of Juz Amma. So, inshallah, just a quick short summary of all of the surahs within one slide, just so, just as a recap for all of us, inshallah, that um, we start with Surah Al Fatiha. First um, ayahs of Surah Al Fatiha, ayahs number 1 to 4. So, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Al Rahman Al Rahim, Maliki Yomidin, Iya Kana Abudu. So, up to halfway through ayah number 4, this is all in praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising Allah through His attributes, the most merciful, you alone we worship, and so forth. And then the second part of the fourth ayah until the end, the seventh ayah, these are different prayers and du'as that people would make. So, إِيَّاكَ نَعْبَدُوا دَنْ إِيَّاكَ نَسْتَعِينَ إِحْدِنَا السِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ That we, you alone we seek your help and guide us to the straight path, the path of those who you have favoured and not those who have earned your anger. So, this is just a quick, just small summary. So, Half of the surah is praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second half is a means of prayer, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Surah Nas, um, where we covered obviously the Mu'awadatan, Mu these two protectors. And we mentioned about how the protection of black magic and so forth. That the Surah Nas it was seeking the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shayateen of jinn and mankind who attempt to misguide through whispering. So we mentioned about how this surah is a means of protection from for the inner, so these whisperings that one has inside this surah is a protection from that, and then Surah Al Falaq is a means of protection from the outer, so seeking the protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil of creation, from the evil of the night, from the evil from black magic and from envious. So we mentioned all of these in detail previously. And then Surah Al-Ikhlas, which describes the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his oneness, how he was, he has no offspring, he has not begotten, nor does he begot, and he has no offspring, no parents, and so forth, and his self-sufficiency, I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of no one or nothing, and everything is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Surah Al-Masad, which talks about the dis destruction and severe punishment for Abu Lahab, who was one of the greatest enemies of Islam, one of the greatest enemies of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alihi Wasallam, and one of the greatest enemies of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, and also for his wife who is mentioned towards the end of the surah, and she also planned and worked against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they were specifically mentioned. And then we moved on to Surah Nasr which talked about the conquest of Makkah, this great fat of Makkah, which caused many people to enter Islam. So, إِذَا جَاءَ نَسُوا اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا So, they enter in groups that large numbers started to enter Islam and then it ended with a reminder to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to seek His forgiveness. In, and we mentioned that this is in times of victory, in uh, not only in times of victory, but in all times, towards the end of our lives, and so forth. And then Surah Al-Kafirun, that this differentiated between the people of disbelief 
uh, the people of belief and the people who worshipped idols. So he rejected the idea of the disbelievers where they approached the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and said, for if we will worship your Lord for one year, you worship ours for one year. And these ideas of the disbelievers and then this surah was revealed differentiating between the people of belief and those who worship idols, the mushrikeen and the kuffar. And then um, last week we mentioned Baswat al Kawthar, so uh, the great bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, granting him abundant good, this al Kawthar, the river, and so forth. And then calling him to continue prayer, continue offer, and offer the sacrifice, and in, informing him of the debasement of his enemies. And then Surah Al Ma'un, which we mentioned about these small kindness, small acts of good. We mentioned this describes two groups of people the disbelievers and the hypocrites. So the kuffar and the munafiqeen, and it talked about their characteristics. So the first half talked about the characteristics of the disbelievers and the second of the hypocrites and how they do things to show off and so forth. And alhamdulillah, we finished off this week with the last um, two surah, Surah Quraysh, which talked about the great blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the people of Makkah, upon the tribe of the Quraysh, how they granted these two journeys of the summer and the winter, the journey northwards and southwards, ordering them to worship him who granted them these journeys but also granted them food and safety and the surah al fil which we just covered talking about the story of the people of the elephant and how they were destroyed and defeated and this is also from amongst the favors of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Quraysh and to the people of makkah so alhamdulillah that's just a, a small kind of one sheet um, summary of the 11 surahs which covered Alhamdulillah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed us to learn about these great surahs during the noble month of Ramadan and one lesson either side before and after Ramadan Inshallah we should take lessons from these surahs and the various different hadith we mentioned about times of reciting these surahs before sleep and so forth Alhamdulillah, uh, just finish off once again, I'd like to thank um, Hanzo Jamia Masjid for this great opportunity to teach throughout this lockdown, throughout the blessed month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept any good that has um, come from us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive any mistakes, forgive me for any shortcomings on my part also. Please remember us in your prayers. Also, make dua for the team at uh, Hansra Jamia Masjid, the committee and so forth. Alhamdulillah, they continued this great work throughout the month of Ramadan where they were sti still remained active whilst many other masjids were clo closed down and they stopped all activities completely. Hansra Jamia Masjid had events and streams throughout Ramadan. They provided food, iftari and Eid gifts and so forth. Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put more blessings and barakah in the work and allow them to do more. And inshallah, just finish off. Um, forgive me for any mistakes that all good, any good that has come is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Any mistakes are from me, please forgive me, treat me in your du'as. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi wa bil'alameen.